This is 17 News with continuing coronavirus coverage. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky. Governor Gavin Newsom is streaming live every day at noon to provide an update on the coronavirus crisis here in our state. Now today he will be talking about the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will bring him to you as soon as he becomes available. In the meantime, let's go to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. There are now 28 new cases of COVID-19. That means there are 1,083 confirmed cases of coronavirus. 11 people have died died. 643 of those infected have recovered and 35 are currently in the hospital. Nearly 8,000 tests have come back negative and the department is still waiting on results for nearly 4,000 others. Now, public health has also broken down the number of cases by age, race, sex and zip code and you can find those numbers on their website. And our deadliest day could still be ahead of us, both here in California and around the nation. Projections from the University of Washington show we could see more than 3,000 people die each day in the U.S. for nearly two weeks. Now, that's the worst case scenario. In total, we could see 135,000 people die from coronavirus by the beginning of August in the U.S. Now, here in California, projections show nearly 4,700 people could die by August. Now, remember, these numbers could change on a daily basis, depending on a variety of factors, such as social distancing efforts. And happening today, a new testing site in Oildale is opening. This as three other sites went online to Kern County yesterday. Well, the Kern County Board Supervisors approves a four-part plan to reopen Kern's economy. Now, they say they could start the process as early as next week. Now, the first part of the plan creates a committee of local leaders who will give enterprise on how to safely move forward. The supervisors formally recognized the committee yesterday. Now, secondly, the county will bring more testing to Delano, Taft, and the Kern River Valley. And third, supervisors will send a letter to Governor Gavin Newsom requesting he allow county leaders to plan their own reopening. And finally, supervisors authorize county staff to create a detailed plan on how to contain any potential additional outbreaks. Third District Supervisor Mike Maggard says there will be consequences no matter what they decide. If we reopen the economy, let's do that decide first, it's, it's a certainty that more people are going to be infected and, more, and some people are going to die from that. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible prospect. It's, it's heartbreaking that that's the case. If we do not move forward and reopen the economy, it is a certainty that lives will be ruined, mm -hmm. homes will be lost. It is a horrible dilemma on either side. However, the county proceeds Maggard is urging a careful approach. If the county decides to at least partially reopen next week, supervisors will first need to hold a special meeting. Now that could come as early as Monday. And the argument for opening churches also came up during the county supervisors meeting. Some say it's time to open while others say doing so would put people at risk. So my church, you go in, I sit down and we're all sitting six feet apart. We, I, we've closed it because the governor said so, but before he closed it, we were all six feet apart. I mean, it was better than going into Walmart. So why, why, is, why is that, why is, I don't understand, I don't, I don't get that one. He has indicated that churches and other religious type services are included in stage three because they are higher risk due to the gatherings that occur. I, I find that unfathomable. We've had a unique issue with churches, Mick, because so many are populated by elderly and they are uniquely vulnerable. While Kern's ability to reopen is still directed by Governor Newsom, the board was passionate about creating its own plan with local flexibility. And the task force that focuses on the COVID-19 pandemic will not shut down after all. This morning, President Trump tweeted that because of the task force success, it will continue on indefinitely with its focus on safety and opening up our country again. Now this after word that the task force would be phased out within the next few weeks. President Trump says now he's focused on safely reopening the economy and putting Americans back to work. Well, new at noon, Bakersfield police arrest a man accused of stabbing two people, killing one of them. This all started at about one o'clock this morning. Officers responded to Pacific Street near Brown Street. They found two people, a man and a woman with stab wounds. Now, that woman died at the hospital. The man has minor injuries. Detectives identified Leonardo Herring Jr. as the suspect. He was arrested just blocks away near the corner of Flower and Haley just before 11 o'clock this morning.
And in your 17 Crime Watch, the Kern County Sheriff's Office is investigating a shooting that killed one person and seriously hurt, hurt two others. Now, it happened just before 11 o'clock last night near a home on Maria Way near Consuelo Street. Now, that's not far from Robert F. Kennedy High School. When they arrived, deputies found three people with gunshot wounds. One died at the scene and two others were taken to the hospital. One is in critical condition while the other is stable. Investigators are trying to figure out what led up to the shootings. We will bring you more information as soon as it becomes available. And the sheriff's office is also investigating a suspicious death in northeast Bakersfield. Now, this happened last night just before midnight. Deputies were called to the area of Goodman Street near Alta Vista for a report of suspicious circumstances. They found someone dead in a trash can in the alleyway. KCSO is investigating. An arrest has been made in connection with the murder of a man in Oildale in January. 33-year-old Roger Archer Jr. was shot and killed January 18th at a trailer park on Beardsley Avenue. Now, last Thursday, the Kern County Sheriff's Office arrested 29-year-old Jesse Lee Lamb. Lamb is scheduled to be arraigned, arraigned next Monday. And a shot spotter activation leads to an arrest in East Bakersfield. At around 8.30 last night, Bakersfield police were called to the area of Flower Street in Haley. There, they say they found 22-year-old Lawrence Apota with a loaded 40 caliber handgun. Officers also found several 40 caliber bullets casings in the area. Now, nobody was hurt. Police arrested him on several charges, including felony firearm violations and gang participation. And BPD is searching for three suspects wanted for thefts at a famous footwear earlier this year. According to the department, the suspects were involved in several theft incidences in February at that famous footwear located at 5243 Gosford Road. They're all described as Hispanic in their 20s to 30s. One suspect is 5 feet 8 inches tall, 140 pounds, with dark hair and large sideburns. He was wearing a Chicago Cubs baseball cap. Another suspect is 5 feet 4 inches tall, medium built, light complexion with long black hair. She was wearing a gray black hooded sweatshirt and an orange t-shirt. Now the third is up to 5 feet 10 inches tall, 140 pounds, with dark hair and a mustache. He was wearing a black jacket, a black beanie cap, and blue jeans. Now anyone with any information on these suspects' locations is asked to contact B. PD at 327-7111. Now happening tonight, the Bakersfield City Council plans to have a similar decision on reopening the economy. Members will vote to send a letter to the governor asking for more flexibility. The council says the pandemic has had a drastic impact on our economy, so more flexibility will make it easier for them to work with local businesses to plan a safer reopening. Now that meeting starts tonight at 5:15. Welcome. So now let's talk about the weather because I want to talk about rain and people have been talking about this and when we might get more rain and how last year looked. Last year in 2019, we picked up over an inch and a half of rain in the month of May. Less amounts in 2018 and 17 and then we brought it up to about a half an inch in 2016. So this is where we were looking in past uh, years in terms of May and rain. Nothing in the rain gauge right now. In fact, it's going to be another beautiful sunny day. Let's talk about those current conditions right now already warming up and into the 70s for Bakersfield. Uh, right now, Arvin sits at 76 under mostly sunny skies. And remember, I talked about some high clouds that would push in throughout the day. We've got Wasco, 75 degrees and mostly sunny, and Fraser Park, mostly sunny and 72. Bakersfield sits at 75 degrees right now. A northwest wind at 9, so a nice little breeze, and you can see all valley locations in the 70s. And then we've got uh, 66 out of Tehachapi, Mojave uh, in the 80s. The hot spot today will be Ridgecrest. They're expecting 90s. On the satellite and radar, not much to show you. We've got clear skies all around, and uh, that's the way we're going to keep it here, other than the few high clouds that we're seeing, even up to the north into Fresno. High pressure will build on in here the next few days, so around the state we'll look for some 70s north. Fresno at 86 today, 89 in Los Angeles. The hot spot, Phoenix at 105. So this uh, wheat trough pushes on out and then the ridge of high pressure builds on in, bring us those 90s back. And then next week, another trough develops to the north and west and that will bring our temperatures back down. Futurecast HD, no rain headed our way. We're going to keep us high and dry. For today, we should see a high of 84 degrees in Bakersfield, 86 in Delano, 85 out in Buttonwillow, and uh, then for the mountains. Also mostly sunny. Temperatures will be right near 72 in Fraser Park, 71 in Tehachapi, 80 
81 for Lake Isabella, Kernville at 83, and again, Ridgecrest the hotspot at 96. Here's your extended forecast, 91 tomorrow, 96 on Friday and Saturday, a little cooler on Mother's Day, and then you can see next Tuesday we'll be back into the upper 70s for the mountains into the 80s starting tomorrow. Those 80s will hang around through Saturday, back in the 70s for Mother's Day and 60s by Tuesday. And then for the Kern River Valley, looking at lower 90s Friday, Saturday as well before you see a cool down. And then by next Tuesday, you'll be in the lower 70s. So overall, a little bit of a warm up, but today looking beautiful all around the area. We're going to have much more news coming your way right after the break. Well, for many athletes, their season was cut short, but at CSUB, they are still honoring those and their achievements. Tomorrow, the athletics program will host the ninth annual Rowdies Award Show virtually. The annual Rowdies is a time for CSUB athletes to feature its amazing students, student athletes, and for their impressive accomplishments, both in competition and in the classroom. Now, the event will look different than usual. Instead of rolling out the gold carpet in front of the Fox Theater, student athletes will dress in the nine and attend through a private Zoom session. Now you can watch that live broadcast on CSUB Athletics Facebook page tomorrow. Well, during this time, some people may find themselves in a place considering going back to school to build on their resume or pursue a new career path. Cindy Collier, the professor for career and technical education at Bakersfield College, explains more about if this is the right time. It's absolutely a great time to go back to school. Um, we always believe that going back to school is good, but when the economy gets rough, that's the perfect time to go back to college. You know, we think sometimes of people going back to or going to college right after um, high school, maybe delaying a couple years. But for people who are looking to, uh, you know, continue to add to their resume, what are some of the things that they can do to go back to school and uh, take classes? Well, Bakersfield College is uh, launching our Back to College um, summer program. And so what we're offering is some non-credit courses that are short-term courses that are um, made to really get the person back into the workforce. Things that can deal with office skills or in the hospitality field, but really they're short-term classes, um, completely online, nine-hour class, 18-hour class max. But really they're aimed at getting people back into the workforce. Um, in addition to that, we also have our regular summer school session and our early, early college sessions. So for students who may want to come back and really take on a whole brand new career, now is the time to start thinking about that. Uh, when do these courses start? So our uh, non-credit courses will start in mid-June, okay. um, and as Bakersfield College um, is always committed to serving all the needs of the community, we have multiple sessions for our regular college courses starting as early as May, mid-May, and then again in June 15th and in July as well. So we're really trying to have as many options available for all types of people, um, regardless of where they are in their educational pursuit or in their life. And if someone wants to register how much does it cost and when do they need to register and where can they register? Well, uh, so we would recommend going to our Bakersfield College um, EDU website um, and just click on the link that says back to college um, and that will take them into a completely online virtual format. So they'll have assistance with counseling and financial aid and all of that stuff. Um, we are also doing some online registration sessions. So our back to college, we have registration sessions on May 19th and again at, on June 3rd. And then our online registration um, events for our early college program are May 13th, May 20th, May 27th. So it goes on and on. So really, if students would go to the Bakersfield, Bakersfield College EDU website, that's where they could find all the resources that they need to register. Now we do have Governor Gavin Newsom ready to speak. Let's send it over to him and hear what he has to say today. Today, we are launching a new site uh, for people to be able to access uh, in real time information and also the opportunity to schedule testing. Uh, we've been talking a lot over the course of the last number of months about testing, uh, not just here in the state of California, but all across this country. Uh, California, as you may recall, was testing about 2,000 people every month uh, uh, for the beginning uh, of April. We've been able to increase our testing capacity substantially uh, over the course of the last number of weeks, from 2,000 a day to over 25,000 tests a day. 
In fact, over the last six or seven days, uh, those numbers have increased to roughly 30,000 tests a day. All told, the state of California has tested north of 800,000 people. We have a lot more work to do, but the work of our testing task force uh, has been very, very successful, particularly in not only addressing the needs in the aggregate, but beginning to focus our testing strategies in a much more strategic way, specifically focusing on rural areas in the state of California and on inner cities to make sure that we're truly testing all Californians, not just some Californians. Uh, we mentioned a week or so ago some new contracts, some that are being expanded, uh, some that were new. Uh, OptumServe, which was going to provide 80 sites in rural parts of the state. Verily, uh, that first testing, mobile testing site we announced uh, over uh, a month ago in partnership with Google. Uh, we announced their commitment to do 86 additional uh, sites throughout the state. Uh, we're able today to launch uh, a new uh, site called COVID-19, not new site, well-known site, but a site uh, that allows you to drill down and get more information about these testing sites if you go to covid19.ca.gov. Uh, if you go to the covid19.ca.gov website, uh, you can uh, now find the location uh, by simply pressing in your zip code. Uh, you can provide more information if you wish, but if you just start with the zip code, uh, you'll see these testing sites come up on uh, a map. Uh, you'll see it through OptumServe, you'll see it through Verily, and through the community sites uh, that we have partnered. The sites that are not included in this map are additional testing sites at hospitals, but these are the sites that the state has contracted that are proximate, uh, we hope, within 30 to 60 minutes, depending on where you are in the state of California. I recognize there are still some testing deserts, and we have work to do to put more flags on that screen that you just saw. Uh, but we are making real progress in this space, uh, and we hope you take advantage uh, of not only going to this site, uh, but getting your zip code inputted, and then potentially, the extent you wish, uh, making a reservation, uh, contacting uh, that community tester, contacting uh, Verily and or OptumServe. Uh, and those are prompted on this site, and so you can literally make direct reservations for testing off the covid19.ca.gov website. So that's a, a new tool uh, we wanted to socialize today, uh, make it available to you. Uh, again, we still have an enormous amount of work uh, to do. Uh, this site will expose that, but in a very transparent way, uh, we've been very forthright uh, in our recognition that we need to spread out uh, our testing capacity uh, and also deepen it in certain communities. Uh, this site will show the areas where we still have work to do. Again, it doesn't include the hospital-based system, so uh, that's just something uh, for consideration, but does give you a sense of what is out there uh, and also a recognition that there still are some testing deserts in the state, and we hope in real time uh, through the good work of our testing task force uh, to make sure that we avail opportunities for everybody uh, in those areas as well. Another thing we've been working on is we moved uh, with the announcements earlier this week to discuss reopening our economy with modifications, reopening sectors of our economy with modifications, uh, and adapting and reopening parts of California, regional parts of California, with modifications, with variances uh, based on criteria. Uh, that fundamental uh, point that we needed to advance was the protection of our workers. A few weeks back, you may recall an announcement uh, where we advanced uh, support for our workers in the food chain, uh, from farm workers to the folks in the front lines, the grocery lines in the state of California, uh, through expanding paid sick leave. As you may recall, the federal government provided sick leave expansion uh, for employers less than 500, but not for some of these larger chains and their employers. Uh, in the state of California, we augmented that with the announcement we made a few weeks back with paid sick leave through that food supply chain. There were others, though, that were left out uh, of that support, uh, quite notably uh, out of federal support. And those are the folks, the health care workers, the folks we rely on the most, uh, and many uh, of our first responders, firefighters, paramedics, as an example. They were left out of the original sick leave uh, uh, announcements from the federal government and, and were not part of our previous announcements until today. 
Uh, I just signed an executive order to extend benefits, workers' comp benefits, in those sectors and now broaden it beyond just the health care and first responder sector uh, to all sectors of our economy uh, under what we call a rebuttable presumption. That may be confusing to some except to say this. If you've tested positive or been diagnosed with C-19, with COVID-19, by a physician, uh, you are eligible for this workers' comp benefit. It can only be rebutted uh, by your employer, uh, but under strict criteria. So this is a way of providing uh, support uh, to our critical workers that are essential in our capacity, not only to meet the needs of people today, but as we begin uh, to enter into this new phase and start to reopen our economy, are essential uh, for our capacity to deliver uh, on the services that we want to expand uh, and uh, increase across the state of California. So this is, a, I can assure you, uh, without getting into the weeds, the sauce is making here, uh, people are very passionate in this space uh, in terms of what they want to see. But this executive order uh, will narrow uh, the frame uh, and at least provide some certainty of relief uh, on this presumption uh, for the next 60 days. It has a retro activity uh, to March 19th, uh, but extends uh, for a 60-day period and should provide some calm and relief uh, to our health care workers that were otherwise scratching their head wondering why they weren't part of some of these original announcements, both at the federal level and at the state level, uh, and I think do justice to the incredible heroism, uh, particularly on National uh, Nurses Day uh, here in the United States of America, to say thank you to our nurses, uh, thank you to our frontline heroes, thank you to our firefighters, paramedics doing CPR uh, and the like. Uh, thank you uh, for a job well done. And this is the least we can do uh, in terms of targeting uh, that support uh, on a rebuttable presumption uh, for your workers' comp. Again, the whole idea is as we move into this second phase, we want to keep workers healthy and keep them safe. The worst thing we can do is have a worker that has tested positive but doesn't want to tell anybody and can spread the disease because he or she can't afford not to work. And so that's why expanding to all sectors of our economy uh, this workers' comp presumption is so important because we want people to feel confident and comfortable they'll have their benefits. Uh, of course, these are benefits after you've already exhausted uh, and drawn down any federal benefits you otherwise may have accrued or other state benefits. Uh, there are provisions, there's a criteria we lay out in this executive order, but I think it's a, a very healthy uh, step in the right direction, critical step in the right direction as we move into this phase two. Uh, I'm pleased that we have our Director of Department of Industrial Relations, Victoria, is here uh, today uh, to talk a little bit more about this program. It's part of her larger, and you're probably wondering what Department of Industrial Relations uh, is, but among many other... You just heard the latest from Governor Gavin Newsom. Now, he mentioned a new tool that is available today. It is on the covid19.ca.gov website. Now, it is a site where anyone can put in their zip code and it will find them this a close testing site within 30 to 60 minutes in most, lo most locations. You would just put in your zip code. Now, this does not include hospital-based um, systems, but it does include every other testing site. Now, he also mentioned that he signed in an executive order today that when he first mentioned last week, talking about support for those in food chains, expanding sick leave to those throughout our economy, that it was not mentioned in there about healthcare workers. Well, now, as of today, they will be providing the support for those critical workers. He said the most important thing to remember is we do not want to be moving into the second phase and not have everyone healthy. This is a way to keep them all healthy. Now, if you want to continue watching Governor Newsom's whole live stream, you can go to our Facebook page or our website, kget.com. This is 17 News with continuing coronavirus coverage.